So I love thinking about you first piss the one off that's asking the question because you're selling the opposite and then you do one minus and they're like, okay. Maybe. The beautiful thing is, uh, part B, you've already figured out. The opposite of at least one likes it. Because the opposite of at least one likes it is none of them like it. All of them dislike it. And that's what part B is. So I do like to do that. One question relates to something you just did earlier. Yeah. This would work, by the way. I mean, this would work. I don't want to do it. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. This was kind of freaky because some of them can't be answered. Oh, shit. All right, 3,059 cases of AIDS have been reported. Those cases will be on population. Of those cases, 6.4% obtain the disease through heterosexual contact, and 7.4% are female. So right there, we can, I, again, identify with symbols. They use words there in their questions, but screw them. Uh, so what's the probability in this sample, and well, in this population, that I pick a, uh, a person who got it through heterosexual contact. So let's call that HC. 6.4, so 0.064, is that cool? Uh, let's see, where am I at? Oh, 7.4% are female, so probably female is 0.074. Oh, yeah. Out of the females with the disease, 53.3% got it from heterosexual contact. So what do you know about the person in that last statement? They are female. Out of the females with the disease, and that's what our population is, is the disease. Out of the females, so yeah, there, Jeff. Given that they're female, that percentage got the disease from heterosexual contact. Five, three, three. Okay. So the probably if somebody's uh, female is right there, the probably somebody uh, obtained it through heterosexual contact is right there. The probability, is this the one that you can't answer some? I guess not. Maybe so, let's see what this one is. The probability that the person is female given they got it from heterosexual contact. That doesn't match up with what they told me, right? You guys with me still? Well, what is the formula for that? What would the formula be? God damn it. I hate this long ass classroom. All right. What is the formula for this? Do I know this? Yes. yes. But I don't know this, do I? Oh, you're going to love this. I just, I can feel it. All right, all right. I do know this shit, though, right? Don't I know this? And what's the formula for this? <coughs> right? Isn't that the formula for that? Right. And that's equal to 0. 0.533? Yes, yes. Do I know this? Yes. Can't I solve for this and then put it in? So I, what I did was I wrote the formula for what they asked me. I stood back and I said, do I have everything? No, shit. What do I not have? This. Oh, can I get that? Uh, yes, I can get that. So do, before I do a problem, do I know exactly how it's going to work? No, I don't. 
I don't know. I hadn't done that problem forever. I forgot how the hell it was going to work. So I, what you just see, saw me do is exactly how I would approach the problem. I write down what I know. I write down what they ask me. I write the formula, if there is one, for what they ask me. And then I see, what do I not know? Do I know everything? No. Shit. Can I get what I need from what they told me? Yes. That happens in so much math all over the damn place. That was one of the hard questions. So that was a good question. Yes? No, 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 no. Uh, what's happening? I know that this is 0.533. What does that formula need that I don't know? The and, right? How would I get the and? Well, do I know P of F? Put that in, solve for this. Right? That formula needs the end. I can get the end if I put that in and solve for it. I can see what it is. That's the part that I think students have a lot of trouble with when there's a multi-step problem. But it's all about what do they tell me? Is there a formula for it? What do they ask me? Is there a formula for it? Is there any connection between what I need to know and what I do know? That is so universally used in mathematics everywhere. Yeah. You should have seen that to some degree in algebra, but depends who your teacher was. OK, that is one of the harder questions. I'll give you that. Anything else? I think that's, I'm going to call it. we got to get into 4.3. OK. do today is it's kind of related to that uh, I think I said earlier it was related to what we're doing today the one about the disliking the budget plan and so forth um, if I told you the probability that somebody is left-handed <coughs> is about 11 percent that's what it was the last time I looked at that um, what's the probability that somebody is not left-handed. Yeah, why don't I just say right-handed because that doesn't include everybody. Somebody could be ambidextrous, which means they can use both hands equally well. Somebody could have lost a hand, so. To be really inclusive, I have to make the other option be not that. Where? No, that's an L with the bar over it, right? That little bar means not. The book uses a little prime thing, and that's just dumb. Right. So I'm going to use a little not. You with me? So what have I said? Uh, we select randomly five people. What's the probability that exactly one is left-handed? Now, I understand some people will say one out of five, and that's so wrong because it doesn't take into account this, these numbers at all, right? You see what I'm saying? So if the probability of left-handed was 99%, the probability of only one left-handed person should be really small. If it's 99% chance, then all five of them should be almost always, right? So somehow these have to come into play. So here's how this works. Let me do a couple things first. In this case, considering how I wrote the question, what would you call a success? What am I looking for? I'm looking for what kind of person? I want exactly one left-handed. Left so a left-handed person we're going to call a success. Are you with me? Where are my successes out there? Anybody? I'm not. I'm a failure. You're a success. You're my only success. OK. All right. Or the other lefties don't like raising their hand. That could be it, too. Um, 
I'm going to call this, that is the probability of success, and I'm going to give it the letter small p, just to make this easier to keep track of. So that's the probability of success. I'm going to call it little tiny p dude. And this is the probability of failure. I'm going to call it little q dude. P's and Q's, right? That's not where the saying came from, but oh well. Let me see if you guys, is everybody cool with that? So what's P mean? Little p? Success. Success. And be more specific, in this case, the probability of a left-handed left person. I love it. So if I got five people <coughs> and I want one to be left-handed, and I'm going to write P to mean a left-handed person, right? And Q is a right-handed person. What's one way I can do that? Remember that's this row, I love it, five people. So there's five people. What's one way that one of them could be left-handed? Maybe it's, well, it's you, right? You with me? So, so I can write like this. Let's see if you guys get this. So the first person could be left-handed and the other four aren't, right? Oh. Yes, do you guys see what that means? Right? And why are they written as multiplication? Because what does this really mean? The first one is, and the next one isn't, and an and means multiply. Is there another way to have this situation in general? I know here it's you, but in general, any five people. It could be the first one, or the second one, right? Or means add. Or and we have lost interest now. Well, <laughs> you guys are like, no, Jeff, you never caught my interest. I'm like, damn. All right. Become a cute. All right. Do you guys see what all those mean? So if I have just a random group of five people, I don't know shit about them, right? But somebody tells me one of them's left-handed. Who could it be? The first one or the second one or the third one? That's all that does, right? To find the probability of a situation, I have to add up everything that matches that situation. Those are the five things that match the situation. Maybe? Okay. It's freaking me out. So, help me out. Mathematically, What's kind of dumb about writing each of these? Aren't they all the same thing? What does they, what do each one of these look like? What's a better way to write each one of these mathematically? P times Q times Q times Q times Q. What's a better way to write Q times Q times Q times Q? Q to the fourth. So each one of these looks like this. Is that cool? Why does it make too much freaking sense? What's the power on the P? One. one. And how does it match? I want one success, the rest failures. I love it. But what do I get when I add them all up then? There were how many of them? How many of them were there? Five. So where'd that five come from? It came from how long this list was. Do you see that? I like it. Okay. And so we could actually calculate what this is, because I know what P is. What's P? What's little p? 0.11. And then Q is 0.89 to the fourth. Can you guys calculate what that is? It comes out kind of nifty. You got to love that shit, right? All right, sorry. I knew what the answer was. Three, four, five. Right? Is it one? Damn it. I guess I didn't know what the answer was. It was almost empty. Okay, maybe. So thank God, now watch, let me show you. We're not gonna keep making this list because this list gets bigger than you could imagine very quickly. For example, uh, <coughs> what if instead of five people, right? What if instead of five people I pick 80 people. Gosh, what are you guys going to work? And I want to know the probability that exactly 
Nope, you exactly work the same. Rawr. Exactly 11 are left-handed. Just think about this for a second. Now watch this. What can we write for sure? Do you know how long that list is going to be? If I ask you for a... Do you? Okay, wait. Wow. All right. All right, come on, Ray, man. You don't know. Trust me, you don't know. Think about it for a second. Uh, I would have 80 spots, right? 11 of them would be P's. So how many Q's? You guys understand what I'm saying? I want 11 successes. So I'd have 11 successes, 69 failures, right? So it could be the first 11 are P's, then the last 69 are Q's, or it could be the first two are P's, and the middle three are P's, and then the last six are P's, and the other ones are Q's. Or it could be the first seven, and the middle two, and then the one right there, and then holy shit, right? I don't even know. I'm going to show you how to do this later, but here's how long this list would be. All right, I'll tell you before I tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that yet. We don't know how long the list would be, but I know whatever the number is, it would go right there. So let me just put a bank of blank space. But how many of these do I want? 11. And how many of these do I want? Yeah. Right? I got 11 successes, 69 failures. That piece I don't need any help with. Please let that make sense. I want 11 left-handed, and the rest are not. Why do we turn 11 left-handed people into the rest of the I didn't. Oh. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking. In fact, let's do this. Let's do this. Let me see if you guys can handle this. That's a good point. As I was writing, I was like, oh, shit, please don't get confused. Can we just do this for me? Uh, change this to be 7. So there will be seven here, seven left-handed. So how many not left-handed? <coughs> 73. Do you guys get that piece? So I'm sorry about the 11. I wasn't thinking ahead. This tells me I'm going to have seven successes, seven lefties. And, and so therefore, I must have 80 minus 7, 73 of the other ones, right? The only thing I do not know is the number that represents how long the list would be. So here I'll tell you what it is, and I'll show you how I did it. Uh, let's see, what was it, 80? And then I want seven of those. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Three billion, 176 million, 716,400. So let me just say three billion, roughly, right, give or take. So if you made the list, like we made this list here, I really want you to understand. If you made the list for 80 people, so you went P, 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 11 of them, and then Q, 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 or P, 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 Q, P, Q, 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 you guys kind of, you would go insane before you got to, you know, finish the list. It's 3 billion plus change long. Holy shit. So thankfully, this is the only one I'm going to do this with you. This is the only one that's going to make any of us do this. I'm going to make the calculator do what I just did. I'm going to make it count. I'm going to put that number here. So here's how I did it. There's a cool little function in the calculator. Wait back up. Thank you very much. Sir. Um, and let me tell you how to say this. I, I got 80 people. How many do you want to choose to be something? You want to choose seven, right? Could I say this as 80 total people? I want to choose seven of them to be left-handed. Does that make sense? So watch in the calculator. Does anybody need to borrow a calculator? You're going to need it here pretty soon. To, have it, has any of you ever heard the, uh, the thing about how many pizzas you make given a certain number of toppings to choose from? And the answer comes out in the millions. This is related to that. So here's how you do this. Watch. So 80 
I've got 80 total people. And I want to know how many ways can I choose seven of them? Because when you start to make the list, don't you choose seven places to put the peas? Right here, I just had to choose one place to put the pea. That's why that was so damn easy. So again, eight people, here's where the choose is. Hit the math button for once. Where do you think it might be? Probability. Don't do National Public Radio, do. That one's choose. Big ass C, that's why it's really cool to think of it as choose. 80, choose. Now, if you have an older calculator, it says NCR. It means the same thing. 80 choose 7, right? Yeah. And then you'll get the same number I got. How are we doing? Everybody all right out there? Let me know if you need help. Everybody good? All right, so here's how to handle this. Can you guys... So here would go... 80 choose 7. That represents how long the list would be, which is what that number should be. Is that cool? This number will almost always be stupid big. This, can anyone imagine 0.89 to the 73rd power? That is going to be stupid small, right? And then I'm multiplying it by 0.11 so what we're going to do is we're going to put the whole damn thing in the calculator because stupid big and stupid small is going to average out to normal. So if we put in there 80, math, probability, 7. Which we got to be careful with this. Where's my cursor right now? Down. See how it's got a little over arrow in there? So you have to hit over to come back up. This is, you know, calculator is getting too good. we got to be careful about how you put shit in. Times. 0.11 to the seventh, and again, I'm up. Oh shit, I want to come back down. Times 0.89 to the, what was it, 73. Is everybody with me on that one? Maybe I'll do it again, so we should get, you guys get that? Has everybody got that? Okay. All right, so let's do a fresh problem just to see what it looks like all together. Um, let me do it up here since I've got everything set up here. Shit, my scrap paper. Yeah. Oh, shit. So we got that. Okay. Uh, let's say we have. Uh, what you got, Jeff? I don't know. Let's see. We we pick uh, 92 people, and I know that, uh, what are you going to do, Jeff? Let's say that I know 34% uh, like lima beans, right? I just know that. And I want to know what's the probability if I pick 92 people, the probability that I get exactly what, he, what, Jeff? Dude, I don't know. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do 28. Like lima beans. So everybody understand the, just the reality of this, right? For any group of 92 people, what's the probability that exactly 28 of them like lima beans? So let's, let's capture some uh, values here. What's what's n? Just to bring back an old favorite. Ninety-two, right? N is always the total number you're looking at. So ninety-two. What's little p? Point three four. I think I heard that. Right, because the success is liking lima beans, and the probability of that is thirty-four percent. Point three four. Do not keep it as a percentage. Immediately make a decimal. If you put the percentage numbers in the formula, you're going to get, like, the probability is 18 billion percent. Well, no, no. Uh, so what's Q? I think I heard it. 
0.66, kick ass. So what's always true about P and Q? They have to add to be one, which makes sense because they're opposites of each other. They have to be everything together. All together, they're everything. And then the one last thing that I haven't... What is it about this question that could have changed? Obviously, right? What, what could I change in that question? The, the, the number here, right? It could have been, it, that number could have been anywhere from what to what? You could do it. What's the least number of people that could have liked live beans? Zero. And what's the most? 92. So this, the number of successes is X. That's the variable. That's the thing that could change. So in this case, X is 28. Number of successes. Okay. Good job, Jeff. So this formula is, is almost too nice to believe if you let it be that way. How many people have I got? 92. How many do I want to choose to like lima beans? 28. So how many successes do I have? It's a little repetitive, but it's all right. 28 successes then. So how many failures do I have? Sixty-four, right? How did people get sixty-four? Because of twenty-eight, like them. Ninety-two minus twenty-eight must not like them, right? What's always got to be true about these two exponents? They always have to add up to be n. Please let that make sense. If I have two opposite situations and. 28 of the people do this, then 64 do the other thing because you've covered all the possibilities. They have to add up to be the total. Okay. And then throw them the calculator. Let's see if you guys can throw in the calculator. See what we get. All right, let's see if everybody else gets that. They could have made a mistake. You never know. You got to check. I'm not saying I think you did. I just want everybody to try. You guys getting that? Point oh six nine one. Oh six nine one. Please let me know if you can't get that. Everybody good? Point oh six nine one. So almost a seven percent chance that for any group of ninety two people, twenty eight exactly will like lima beans. Now this by itself is not useful information, but what this leads to, for example. Uh, has anybody ever been bumped off a, a plane? Not while it's flying, I mean, before it gets in the air. Uh, you know, I was like, good job, Surat. You know what bumped means? That means before the plane takes off, they just don't give you your seat. No? Has anybody ever flown in a plane? Has anybody ever heard over the house? Uh, would anybody, no, that's the captain, so you know how the plane is. Hello, would anybody like to give up their seat? We'll give you $100 and whatever, and then a couple of minutes later, We'll give you $200. No, you've never heard that? Yes, so they're trying to get volunteers to give up their seat. And if they don't, they just push somebody out. Why? Why? Because they oversell flights. They oversell flights. Why? Why the hell would they do that shit? Huh? No, because they're smart, unfortunately. Huh? Because people don't show up for their flight. People don't show up for the flight. Yeah. There's a probability that somebody who's purchased a ticket will not show up. And the airplane people, I would say that the airline, the, the airline wants to fly their planes full. Because the plane's going anyway. They want to make as much money as possible from that plane, right? So they're going to try to make sure that the seats are full. And what they do then is they calculate using this idea, using the probability that somebody won't show up, they kind of calculate what is the probability if we oversell it, how often will we have to bump people? So they can control PR problems, PR, public relations. So if they make the probability too high, they're going to be in the news. And if they make the probability too low, 
they're going to not make as much money as they could have. You with me? A little bit, a little bit? All right, so that's where this leads up to, this kind of thing. It's just a building block in that direction. Okay, so let me give you, oh, you got it. I almost forgot. Oh, a couple things, a couple things. Before, you, you un, before I unleash you on that handout. Speaking easy not. A couple things. Uh, first thing is, does anyone remember what this means? I know some of you should. I love, I love you guys. When you answer, it's always. Yeah, this would mean move the decimal back four times. Scientific notation, you guys remember that at all? So remember, a negative power makes it flip, so I'm actually dividing by 10 four times. That's why the decimal moves four times. And the beautiful thing is it starts here, so anytime this is negative, it's got to move once, so there's always going to be one less zero in front. So this would be actually 0. .0007. What does this look like in the calculator? It would look like this. See the little E, dude? That means times 10 to the. It's just trying to save screen space, right? So that's one thing I want to tell you. Here's the other thing. For that problem I just did, is that the one? Yes. 11% uh, left-handed. And there's 80 people. How many left-handed people would you expect to see. If I had a group of 80 people, how many left-handers would you expect to find? Is that a guess? Just tell me what you would do. Don't, don't guess at it. 11% of 80, right? You with me? So that would be 0 0.11 times 80. 8.8, which you would round to 9 alike. But I actually wouldn't round that because that is an expected value, right? That's how many I would expect to see. And what's a, what's a better name for expected value? You know what it is. Related to statistics, one of the most important things to calculate, expected value is another name for average, the mean. So what looks to be the formula? This, oh, so what have we had to do for means before today? Out of a bunch of data, we had to make a freaking table, we had to do some XP of X shit, right? This is the best formula yet. The formula for the mean for an NPQ problem is N times P. The percentage of the number. Bless you. Bless you. The one that I can't explain as well, not because I suck at teaching. You might think so, but I won't. It's just because it has it takes some math that might be above where most of us have gotten to. But the standard 